I am Tina Reynolds, and I am here with Kenny Sadler, and we are doing a series called Black Stories That White People Need to Hear. The reason that I started this is I watched Amber Ruffin on Seth Meyers, and there was a four-day series of Amber telling her stories about her interactions with the police, and what it reminded me was when all of the LGBT issues and coming out and how we have come so far so fast was that we had our coming out stories. And I feel like I don't know black lives. I, I am a white person in a white world and I invite black people in and they invite me in. And I think that these stories are things that we really need to hear and feel in our hearts. How, how it's so hard. There are so many differences in their day-to-day -day lives, in your day-to-day -day life. And so I want your story, Kenny. Um, right. Tell me, tell me how weighty it is today, uh, especially after this is another last weekend uh, with Rashid being killed. I mean, it's like it's not stopping, and it never has stopped. And that's what I want you to tell me the story about. Yeah, um, thank you for having me, Tina. Um, it is weighty, even just as you said that. You know, I could feel. You know, it's it's visceral, um, for sure. Um, so 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 the weight now is a combination of: Are we really going to keep this thing going and really deal with systemic change, uh, systemic racism, and, and institutional racism? Are we really going to deal with the economic stuff? Um, it's weighty because I have two sons. Um, and they're both living on their own. Uh, one hasn't had a car for more than nine months, my 18 year old. Um, and he is not as, um, apologetic and, you know, he's not as, he, he's my older son, my 21 year old, you know, yes, sir. No, sir. Sure, sir. He's not going to get attitude with the police. My younger son, if he thinks he's not wrong about something, he'll he'll let you know. And um, and and it's also weighty because uh, you know uh, my brother, my little brother, six five, is is a lieutenant with the Oceanside Police Department, and um, you know he he gets promoted. He's in the office doing all the office work, and and he's been out in riot gear. He's been out at riots uh, in La Mesa, down near San Diego, and both of his sons have followed him. Uh, his 25-year-old and his 23-year-old uh, sons have followed him to their 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 police officers, um, and they're biracial. So they have it's waiting for me because they have to. They're in the middle of it all, you know. Um, it's weighty because I believe that I was kind of born for this time and trying to carve out the time and the means to go and do the kind of work that I've, I've been called to do. Um, it, it's a challenge every day and, and it's, you know, uh, you know, uh, I'll, I'll tell you flat out all of the, all of the. The, the killings. I don't want to get into the details about uh, any of them other than George. Uh, uh, really, but all of them have, some of them have been justified, but, but few and far between. And they may have been technically justified, but because black boys and men are seen as dispensable, it, it doesn't really matter if they blow it or they mess up or they pull the trigger too quickly because we're not, we're not, we're not the most valuable people out here. So that, that, that I could go on and on. The, the last thing I'll say is everything I, every day I walk out of my house or wherever I am, I am, I am completely aware that I'm a black man. I would go down to the to the to the to, to the hallway to get some ice at this hotel. <laughs> I know I'm black, right? I know 
when I'm getting on an elevator. I, I, I mean, anytime I'm outside, it's it's, and I don't know how we do it because it's just it's just a constant. You're black, yeah, and 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 that's weighty. Although I've been carrying it all my life, and um, that that that's. It's a lot of stuff going on, but I don't want this thing to go away. I don't want this to be something that we, you know, talk about for a few months or whatever, and then we're back to back to the same devaluing, mm-hmm. right? It's are you new, are uh, you in a in a place where you're hopeful finally? I mean, I've lived through the '60s and '70s and '80s and '90s and 2000s. It's like again and again and again but now i'm i've gone through the lgbt changes where we're becoming accepted by society and it's because of our coming out stories and i think that this story is part of your coming out stories yes i can see that you're black when i first met you it was like i said would you be my big black man and i'll be your lesbian right and i shared that with so many people i thought that was just so funny well, and it's true because I need to know you and you need to know me. And yeah. how are we ever going to build relationships unless we're crossing these cultural divides? Yeah. There's no fence here. It's like I have no fence with you. Um, so to answer your question, I am I am hopeful in a way. I just got chills saying the word hopeful in a way that I've never been before. Um. But man, there are some opinions and some things feelings by people I go to church with and 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 it breaks my heart because I'm going you're kidding right like they want to talk about and I understand it's uncomfortable nobody wants to be someone who's not racist or not you don't you don't, you don't have to be racist to comply in a racist society and right. be okay with it. Right. Right. And I think that's where a, a, a lot of people are. They go, they take it personal. And I've had some difficult, difficult conversation, but you, you really, you and, and, and many others, um, give me hope. Well, you know, it, it's, this is, I truly believe that this weight needs to be on my shoulders and all white people your weight needs to be transferred to me so that we can make the strides that we need in our society, that it's uh, equity, equality, justice, and it needs to be served through the white community because we've been pushing it onto you uh, for 450 years and longer, right? It's it's my job to help this to end. Um, But I need to stand behind you and, and support you and not take the lead on the, uh, the movement. It's your movement. I'm here to support you. And then at the top of the pyramid is the, the black people. And then white people need to gather underneath and support and move, help move forward. Mm, that's, that's really good. We that's, have to. That's, that's, um, that's really the, good. The, uh, the gay movement would never have changed until we started our coming out stories and Um, got the black community behind us. I mean, everybody was against us Uh, in the 90s. You know, you can go back to the 90s. It's like, no. I was. I was. I mean, I never called anybody any names. I never, you know, did any hate crimes, but I didn't understand it. You don't understand it, right? I don't understand it. I can I can do all the work that I can to get to know my black friends and to, I, I mean, you're friends. You're not black friends. You're just friends, right? Yeah. That's the that's the world that I want. I want everybody in my circle so that I can learn more. If I don't invite you in, you're not going to come in. So we need to to reach out and connect. You know, I don't. There's so much that I don't know about the black community that I'm. That's where these stories come from. I don't think that white people really understand the the weight of the movement in your whole life has been um how it is that you had to talk to your sons about how is it you know 
I talk to my kids and I said, you need to be polite to adults. You need to be kind. You need to be a respectful, but you go deeper. You awesome. have to go deeper. You too. Don't you listen? If your wallet is somewhere that you don't think you can get it without looking, you say, Officer, open the door and take me out of the car. <laughs> Detain me while you get my registration and insurance and whatever. Uh, don't you move those, do not move those freaking hands. And, and you know, when you asked me to do this, I, I promised myself that. You know, I wasn't going to put no extra on it, right? Like, uh -huh. I'm, what I'm telling you is, is, is there's no hyperbole here. When I tell you how many times I've said to them, listen, and I call them all the time and go, man, are, you, you got you to gotta be careful. Don't give anybody any reason to do anything if you have to, if you have to let people go by, if you have to, whatever you do. And, and 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 that is that is quite a burden. And and and, and again, I I I've, I've been arrested five or six times, um, all because I, I didn't when I was in college and stuff. I didn't believe in I didn't believe in getting my tags renewed, and and, and I didn't believe in you know when they first came out with mandatory insurance. I was like, ah man, I can't afford no insurance. You know, I was a young man. Okay. And, and so I've had my driver's license uh, suspended because I didn't pay a ticket. Right, or right. I didn't it's show all the young person lessons. And, 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 they, and I'm telling you, all of, the, all of the officers who arrested me were the nicest. They were all Caucasian. And they, they, one of them told me I was the nicest guy he ever arrested. And he really wished he, he, really wished he didn't have to take me in. But he couldn't let me drive without a driver's license. Uh -huh. um, so I spent the night in jail. I, uh, so I, I tell people, oh, yeah, I, 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 you know, I, I put some time in. I put some time in. <laughs> it was a total, total of about four and a half days. Yeah. Um, uh, but but uh, on, the, on the more negative side, uh, I was telling you the other day about the incident, Highway 880 South in Hayward. Bay Area. Mm -hmm. I'm, um, how old was I in, uh, in 93? I was 25, right? And I was on my way to my job. I worked at a, um, I, was, I managed a, um, a fitness club, a fitness center, you know, like 24 hour fitness or something like that. And I was on my way. I had this beat up, raggedy Honda Civic. I never speed, and that's the truth. Um, I drive my cars easy, and especially if they're raggedy. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really gentle with them. But I'm riding down the, the street, and I see the lights. They come on. Of course, I'm crapping on myself because that's I just learned that. Yeah. Like that's that's I, I saw them snatch my daddy out of the car one time, um, uh, just because he said he didn't have his uh, wallet with him or whatever. And instead of them giving him a ticket, you know, they called him on it and they literally, I'm in the passenger seat, they literally grabbed my grown man father, snatched him out of the car. And I was like, so I had all of that stuff growing up, but so I get pulled over by, by the police, highway patrol, and one car was back there for 10 minutes. That's a long time. Long time. Then I see another car come. And another car come. Now this is before they approached you. But yeah, they hadn't even approached me yet. Oh. No, they said to me, uh, uh, said something on the megaphone or whatever. Yeah. And I'm waiting. I'm like, hey, I got my driver's license. I got my insurance. I'm, like, I'm legit. You know? <laughs> so, you know, what's, what's the deal? And all of a sudden, I heard that there ended up being about four cars and about seven officers. And I'm cleanly dressed. I had a brand new leather jacket that I'd gotten for Christmas or something. I had on a black turtleneck. 
um, like a mock turtleneck and relatively new shoes. They came, they, they said, put your hands on the steering wheel, which they already were. I want you to take your right hand, reach over with your left hand still on the steering wheel, open your door. I look in the rear view mirror, they have guns cocked. I'm telling you, I'm terrified. I was more terrified of, 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 of the big trucks. I hate being on the side of a freeway and 880 is a route for a cargo yeah. truck, you know, big trucks. <clears throat> and I thought, you know, I was, I was afraid to get hit. I was afraid that one of the cars might do something and scared a cop and they shoot me. They took me out of that car and it was like they purposely took me to like the mud. Like it, it wasn't completely wet. It was just kind of damp. The gravel in the mud, they made me get down on one knee, get down on another one. And I'm not asking any questions. So you don't know why they pulled you over? Well, they did tell me eventually. So I must have been. But at that point, you didn't know? No. Oh, wow. Wow. I I knew to keep my mouth shut and do everything they told me to do. Yeah. Yeah. They wasn't getting no pushback from me. So um, anyway. they made me lay on my stomach, hands behind my, my, my new shirt is just filthy. Ah. So, you know, and, and, you know, they got to, I look up and I'm telling you, there was a dude, you know, those, those glasses, the cops wear yeah. the yeah. mirrors. Yeah. They're scary to me. Right. They're like, like they can see you, but you can't, I mean, they got those, right. those, uh, I don't know what you call them, mirrored glasses or whatever. But there was a dude, I'll never forget, big, big mustache, white dude. He was a big guy, too. And he was like, I don't know if he said to me, you better not move, or that's what was my interpretation of what he was saying in his head. Yeah. Right? That wasn't even the bad part. The bad part was they said, after about 20 minutes, that we had a description of this car or you fit the description of somebody who robbed a bank or did something, right? And I'm going, you couldn't have looked up like the license plate number and see, like like you couldn't, I don't know. I felt it was so unjustified that, and they didn't, they just, they just, they just put me in the dirt. I was filthy. That e- that wasn't even the bad part. Uh, it's when they finally got me up. Twenty some odd minutes later, there's six cops around me. Some of them having conversations with themselves. One lady came over and said, "You know, here's why we stopped you." And then we ju- we just found out that the suspect is over here somewhere else or whatever. And and she said, you're free to go. And, I'm, and, and, and all I could say was, are you kidding me? You, you got my, my, my driver's license? Are you kidding me? Like, how do you do that? No apology. I'm, I'm, I'm not going off though, but I'm, I'm hurt. I have tears in my eyes and I'm going, like, come on, really? And the big, the big dude with the glasses and who had the gun over me, he stepped in her way and he said, we said you're free to go. Oh. No apology, no, sir, we, we're, we're really sorry to have troubled you today. Um, you know, our jobs are stressful and, and you know, you know yeah. sorry got you all dirty and everything, but uh, the dude, looked, he looked at me like, do you want some more? Ugh. And I mean, it, it broke my heart. It broke my heart. I felt, I felt like I would tell people, I still tell people if, if it was any other, I, I, I don't know that that's not true. Everybody gets pulled over and stuff happens to them. But I, I thought that, you know, if I was a blonde lady and the car fit the description, 
they would they would have taken some extra steps. You're right. By, You're right. they wouldn't they wouldn't have done her like that. Now, You're still right. Worse stuff has happened to people, whether it's law enforcement or or whatever. But I'm telling you, the lack of acknowledgement that that most white people have about the the privilege they have, and and it's it they it's not their fault. Like right? if if black people would have had the mind to enslave white people, we'd have done the same thing. We would have made them work for free. Yeah. We we would have you know not let them vote. We what I'm saying is we're no better quality people, right? I think it's really tough. I know there's some Africans who are racist, right? Even toward black people sometimes. Yeah. I think it's really tough for an African American person in America to be racist because in within race you could not like another race, right? But Damn near all of our dislike of white people comes from the way we've been crapped on forever. Yeah. So that, that, so it, we have like uh, we have like four minutes. I okay. want I want you to tell me what can I do and what can white people do? How how do we get how do we make friends with people? How do we help businesses? What what do you see that What's an action that we can take that can continue to build hope in you? I, I would, I would, if there was a button that I could ask you to push, it would start with this, right? Because I need you to understand that this ain't just complaining and whining and all that. Yeah. So it starts with getting to talk to me. Then, secondly, break your neck, figuratively, obviously, to help dismantle the things that have held black people back. We got this long, white people got this great head start, gobbled up all the land, all the corporations, all the banks, right? And we just have to play our little role, get our little, you know, we we'll get our little Obama here and there, or, you know, somebody did something. And so dismantling, like, 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 how do we, policy-wise, how do we kick the doors in and go, it's not right that, that, that the average family has $100 worth of, of, of wealth and we got five compared yeah. to, yeah. that ain't right. We're not stupider than nobody. Yeah, yeah. So that that's what, the, the, the help dismantle and talk to people. You you get it done, sister. This is, well, this is what it's about. Let's let's keep talking, and I may I may call you back up for some more uh, dialogue because um, if we get questions on these, um, I may send you. You know, I think that it needs to start. It, it need, in my life, it started a long time ago, but we gotta we gotta really lean into it. I gotta lean into it hard. It's gotta be hard. I'm gonna lean hard into this. And hopefully enough of you are going to open your arms up and say, Tina, come on in. Uh, I want to talk to you. And I'm here to share the conversations with uh, all of my white friends because they need to hear this. It, I'm leaning hard. Dude, I'm leaning hard into you. And I, I see you. I, I want to say one last thing. Sure. This the last thing I want to say. We say stupid shit sometimes, black people. Right? So do white people. So do white people. <laughs> We, sometimes we don't have all of our facts together because we're so frustrated and there's so many different angles and, 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 and we might say something that's not true or not completely true and then the white person will jump on that and just disqualify the whole, everything else that was said. We, you, you, know, you stick a, a, a microphone in our face, you know, and, and, and somebody just killed somebody's brother. We just, we just, we, we, we feel devalued and, and we can't get our words straight sometimes. And I cringe cause I'm going, okay, that, that didn't go over well. They didn't say the right thing. Um, I know what they meant, but the critics are going to go, Ooh, look what he said. Yeah. I mean, you have a, a, a microscope on you and Everybody's tracking. Well, we got to give some passes, and we got to give some uh, uh, 
some e-ticket rides. I don't know if you remember e-ticket. That's in Disneyland. Boy, that's how old I am. Wow. You, you got to go to the front of the line. If they want to put lights in Midtown where I live, I'm going to say, put the lights in Meadowview. Put the sidewalks in there first. When you get that up to our level, then we can put lights here. That's it. That's it. You get you get first dibs. That's that's what I really think. Reparations need to start in some way, form, or fashion. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Start. It just needs to start. And listen, I I've been through the conversation. I I, I wouldn't know how to start a reparations uh, deal. But I do know that we we need to get some passes toward the front of the line. Yeah, yes, you do. And 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 and, and hardworking white people have to be okay with it because they have been they have been living. Not every white person is rich and has everything, but I'm saying they're not not rich because they are white. Yes. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Right. So anyway, anytime you need me, anytime uh, you want to have coffee when when this old crap is over, and we can talk about uh, LBGT issues. Okay. We, we can, can talk, talk about, about the world, the yeah. Lakers. So Kenny, I need to thank you for sharing your story. Your sh- your story is so important for white people to hear. Um, to hear the differences of your life of bringing your, as you grew up, as you raise your kids. Um, and these stories are going to make a change in our community, and I'm going to lean in, and I'm going to lean in hard. So thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you. I, I needed to get it out. I know I was all over the place, but, but I, got, I have so much to say, and I, I've been working since about 2 a.m., um, trying to finish a report and I meant to script out something, but um, hopefully you got it. You were perfect. It was perfect. Okay. Thank you, Kenny. Bye-bye. Talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.